So how can I stop myself from repeating this cycle? So this is a question that I received from on Instagram and it's a long one. So I'm going to try to read it, um, shorten it. But basically, like, uh, how can I stop repeating the cycle? I'm trying so hard, but sometimes I can be really horrible to my daughter. Right now I'm living with my mother. I feel trapped. Um, I'm ill. Uh, I feel like unfit to watch my daughter and I don't have any help. I'm in therapy, but by the end of the week It's gone to shit again. Um, I don't want my daughter to hate me, but I can already see it's having an effect on her I'm really trying hard, but I'm exhausted and I feel trapped But I do make a conscious effort to apologize when I'm wrong and we talk and we talk about and accept feelings But I feel like I'm constantly running on empty and my needs and my feelings are permanently neglected Hence why I end up getting mom rage you are working to mend that relationship when there is a disconnection and that's a great thing so you are validating feelings which is a great thing because one of the things that children really need is a validation of their existence a validation of their feelings a validation of them as people in general so that they know that they exist that they have a sense of self like i am a person because somebody's saying that i exist my mother you accept her feelings which is good and so this is the issue so you're doing a great job the issue here and one of the things about mothers in our society is that they are chronically stressed chronically stressed and that is creating a disconnection between their children and their mothers or just parents in general but mothers are chronically stressed because they're expected to do all these things um, and then culture and society that's why when i say that i'm like dude just drop all of culture and society's expectations drop that load just focus on your family and how you could connect with your children see the issue is not like the parenting the issue is the um situation that you're in so let me explain when you're raised in a narcissistic family system or you have narcissistic parent or a toxic parent or you live in chaos or a stressful environment your nervous system is jacked up okay so from a young age you're also taught to ignore your body so ignore the sensations of your body what's going on inside your body and ignore your feelings and your emotions and only focus on your parents so as an adult you basically have to learn to stop ignoring your body and stop ignoring your feelings. so we're not ignoring feelings here so that's a good thing now when it comes to the body maybe we are ignoring or maybe we're not aware what's going on in our body and that's okay so one of the things that we need to learn how to do is uh, feel safe in our body but also understand what's going on in our body what is our body trying to tell us when it comes to the environment that we're in because this is one of the first things that need to happen so that you could see what you need to do so that you could get out of that survival mode because right now you're in survival mode okay your body is out of whack your nervous system is out of whack um, you're not able to relax so when you're not able to get out of that survival mode you're number one you're chronically stressed your body's chronically stressed too because it's chronically stressed it gets inflamed and you may develop physical symptoms you may become ill your immune system is compromised the other thing about being in survival mode is that you tend to look uh, see in tunnel vision so it's harder to access that part of your brain the prefrontal cortex that has to do with logical thinking with planning um, with long-term uh, goal planning and also like delaying gratification and things like that so when you are under survival mode it's hard to access that part of your brain which means you are only thinking about what's going on in the current present and just surviving what's going on in the present and you're going to continue to be in survival mode if you are around that person who has caused your trauma and you haven't taken the steps to heal that trauma and to be quite frank you need there has to be some separation from the person that caused you that trauma so if it was your mother there has to be some separation for you to finally be able to relax a little bit so that you could start focusing on your healing because if there's no separation and you constantly are in that state with your mother then it's you're gonna stay stuck in survival mode and it's like a vicious cycle right so you're stuck in survival mode your mother's constantly triggering you your body remembers how she was around you your body remembers the chaos how you felt as a child and because of this you become ill you get sick it's hard for you to like do things and plan things you feel hopeless so it's a vicious circle and it's hard to get out of it because you feel hopeless so you don't do anything you feel like you're not you feel trapped so you don't do anything um, it's hard for you to access that prefrontal cortex so you're not able to think long term plan or set goals because you you're just focused on surviving you're just focused on surviving in this case maybe you might not be able to get out of that 
right away. Totally understandable. It makes sense. It takes time. So one of the first things that you could do is find a way to get your body to relax. Anyway, just anyway, even for five minutes, for five minutes, like any way to relax, because when you have some clarity, when your body's relaxed, that's when you could start planning. That's when you could start looking at the future ahead. That's when you could be like, okay, maybe I am not trapped. Maybe this is, maybe I could do this, or maybe I could stay with a friend, or maybe I could apply for one job a day, uh, you know, get out of the situation that I'm in. But that's not going to happen when you're constantly under arousal and you're constantly just trying to survive. And you're right. Like you said that sometimes it's hard for you. Like you're running on empty. Yes, you are running on empty. That is like the perfect way to describe it. You're running on empty. You're chronically stressed. And the reason why you get mom rage is because your tolerance, your tolerance of stress right now at the moment is low. Like you have to build up your tolerance, right? It's low because you're constantly under stress. You're around your mother who caused you your trauma. And every time you get re-stressed, it takes your body time. This is more like biology, physiology. Um, it takes your body time to uh, metabolize the cocktail of stress hormones, okay? So whenever you get aroused, whenever you get stressed out and you're chronically stressed and it keeps happening over and over, your body has to metabolize those stress hormones. But if you're constantly stressed, your body will struggle to do that. And it takes hours. It could take days for that to happen. So I'll give you an example. Maybe like you don't live around your mother and like maybe you visit her once a year. But when you visit her, you get like, you know, stressed. And then when you get home, it's like you're aroused for like a week or two. That's your body uh, reacting around her physiologically because of your body remembering. And then now your body has to metabolize those stress hormones and, you know, so that you're finally able to calm down. But if you're in that state constantly, it's like it's draining. It inflames your body. It could uh, your immune system is compromised and you feel hopeless. You feel trapped. These are all symptoms, symptoms. OK, there's nothing wrong with it. These are all symptoms of a dysregulated nervous system. Like your body is just trying to protect you. So of course, it's only going to focus on the present, like what's going on. Okay, when you survive, when you survive. So makes total sense. So don't feel ashamed about it. Don't feel bad about it. It's understandable. So find a way to relax however which way possible. If you could take a walk outside, that's a way to relax. And that's where you could start. Baby steps. And then once you are able to relax your body a little bit more, maybe build up your tolerance of stress a little bit more. But it's it's really hard to build up your tolerance of stress when you're around the person that caused you and traumatized you as a child, if that makes sense. So there needs to be like space. While this is happening, yeah, your mothering will be compromised. So the best thing that you could do is make sure that you are repairing that disconnection anytime it happens, apologizing to your child, um, even maybe explaining to her, like, you know, like, this is what's going on. Like, I'm really stressed out. And when these things happen, like in our body, like, um, it causes inflammation. I'm trying to think about it in a like kid friendly age. My tolerance for stress right now is really low because of what's going on in my life right now, but it has nothing to do with you, sweetie. It just means that, um, I'll be able to spend some time here and there with you, but I got to make sure that I work on some things so that my stress tolerance goes down. Um, I mean increases and you can even do like uh, exercises with your kid too, like some relaxation exercises because you're also bonding with them if you do that yin yoga yoga nidra breath work meditation fine groups to co-regulate yes those things have been really helpful for me anyways Stephanie you're right too because if you're dysregulated a person can help you co-regulate a person who is not dysregulated, who is very regulated in their body, you know, they're calm. They have the ability to help you co-regulate. Like we are social beings. We're able to do that for each other. So if you know somebody in your life or if you're in a group, yoga also works. Yeah, I've heard yoga does a lot. So co-regulation with the person also very helpful. They're able to help you relax. 